everyone welcome back to another video hope you're doing good thank you so much guys for coming back thank you for subscribing to my channel thank you for the love and support thank you so much i really appreciate you all in case you're watching me for the first time you're highly welcome my name is cynthia and to my returning subscribers you guys are absolutely welcome in today's video i'm going to be showing us how to make this off shoulder bustier short dress we add them pleat or gather to the shoulder to the round shoulder so that's what we're going to be making today so these are the items we'll be needing for this tutorial i have about three yards of fabric here but i don't know the name you can use any fabric of your choice i have my lining and my light interfacing i have about a three to four yards of crinoline i have my lace design i'll be using this for the upper part here's my interfacing and I, I have my pattern paper here so let's get started I'll be making use of this basic pattern draft. I mark up some lines here. So I have a, a basic pattern in my description box. I will link it there. Though I will still explain it to you guys. So we start with the front part. The shoulder is 7 inches. I added half inch to it, making it 7.5 inches. The neckline is a 3.5 by 3.5. So this is the chest line. From shoulder to chest is 8 inches. And that is where I marked my ankle. From shoulder to bust is 10 inches. From shoulder to under bust is 14 inches. Shoulder to waist is 16 and a half inches. So we'll go ahead and modify the basic pattern. So the first thing we do is to look for the bust palm. Bust palm is from one nipple to the other nipple. The one I'm working with is 7 inches. Divided by 2 is 3.5. I will add half inch for sewing allowance. That is 4 inches. So this is the waistline. Right from this waistline. Sorry, I'm using a different marker. So this is the waistline. So I'll mark 4 inches here. 4 inches here. That's the under bust line. So this is the bust line. I will still mark 4 inches here. So I'll make a straight line here. So what we are going to do next is to impute the dart measurement, which is a little bit busty. The bigger the bust, the bigger that impute. So because she's on the busty side, I will use 2.5 inches for the under bust. I will also use 2.5 inches for the waistline. So I will divide 2.5 inches between this line. So this is the under bust measurement. I will mark 1 inch and a quarter on this side and mark 1 inch and a quarter on this side. I will do the same thing for the waistline. So I will come down one inch from the bust line and go up one inch from the bust line. I will connect this. I will also connect it to this one inch below the bust line. Make sure it's not straight. Okay. I will check what I have here. This is from the bust to the under bust. So I have four inches here. So I will mark four inches round. I will make 4 inches dots. I will just mark it around. I'm making a 2 dress, so I need to take the accurate measurement. I want you guys to understand what I'm doing. That is why I'm placing this. I know this measurement is not really necessary. So I'm marking this 4 inches round so that the upper part will be covered with. Because it's a tube top, some people would like to bring it very down. But some don't like their body to be exposed. So that is why I'm making this round to make sure this, the pores, will be very covered. I will go to the shoulder side here, this upper part. Check what I have here. I have 4 inches here. I will look for the midpoint of these 4 inches. 
this is the midpoint i will connect it to this one inch above the bust line So what I'm going to do is to impute the dart. Whatever I have here, I will place it here. This is the upper part. This is two and a half inches. I will still divide the two and a half inches between this line here. That's the upper part. I will mark 1.5 inches on each side. I will connect it to this one inch above the bust line. So what we are going to do now is to impute the neckline. But this is an off-shoulder blouse. I'll be minusing six inches. You can bring it down to this place. You can bring it down to seven inches. You can bring it down to six inches. Depends on what she wants. I will mark eight inches. I will go right from the post line. I will go up by one inch. So this is the neckline. I will be making a sweetheart neckline. You can leave it like this. You can go up by one inch. But for this, I will just go up by half inch. Then I will connect it like so, bring it to the neckline and then take it to the armhole. I know the easiest method to make is to draft it direct to the fabric while you minus use the off shoulder. I don't want to do use that method because I will not be able to get this cup line very well. That is why I'm drafting it on the pattern paper then I will transfer it to the fabric. We'll go ahead and then take the measurement. The bust measurement is 40 inches divided by 4 is 10 inches so this is 10 inches i will add this 2.5 inches back because i'll be cutting it out so we add it back then add 1.5 inches for sewing allowance so i'm going to extend the line so i'll just take it like so I will still mark the same measurement for the post line. I will bring it to the post line. I will place a quarter of our waist measurement here. A quarter of our waist measurement is 8.5 inches. I will add these 2 inches back and add 1.5 inches for sewing allowance. That's 4 inches altogether. I will use the waist measurement for the under bust and the waistline. So I will mark 8.5 inches here. 8.5 and add 4 inches to it. So I'll go ahead and connect it. So I will go ahead and then add half inch here for sewing allowance around the, the upper post here. I'll add half inch for sewing allowance. I'll still add half inch for sewing allowance at the bottom part. So that's it for the front part. We move over to the back side. So I've already marked out some lines here. The back neckline is 3.5 inches and the depth is 1.5 inches. So this is the chest line. And the, this is the waistline, 16.5 inches. I've already imputed the dart measurement, which is 4 inches plus sewing allowance. So I marked about 6.5 inches. That's the length of the dart. So what we are going to do is to place the circumference measurement. A quarter of the post measurement is 10 inches. Remember 1.5 inches is our sewing allowance for the front part. I will still add 1.5 inches for sewing allowance here. A quarter of our waist measurement is 8.5 inches plus 1.5 inches for sewing allowance. And I add 1 inch for this dart. The back dart is just 1 inch. So this is the zip allowance, it's 1.5 inches. So right on the waistline here, I will go inside by half inch and then mark a straight line here, just to have a very nice and a flat zip at the back. So you take it up like so. I'll go ahead and connect it. So we add half inch here, that's the sewing allowance. So we go and create the neckline. So we're making a two dress on top. The back is usually deeper than the front part. So for this, I will go down by 
two inches right from the chest line. Then I will make a curve here like so. For the upper part, add half inch for sewing allowance. Yeah, so this is the sewing allowance. So you just take this one up a little bit up. So that's it. I will go ahead and cut it out. For the lower part, I'll be drafting it directly on the fabric. So this is the dark to cut it out. This is the back side. So I'll cut out the front part. So this side then, before cutting it out, make sure this place is, is not straight. So you curve it before cutting it out. So this is the front part and then this is the back. I will cut this out before we cut out the damp part. Just transfer it to my fabric. So make sure your fabric is on fold. So I'll go ahead and cut everything out. So guys, I've transferred the pattern to the fabric. I cut out the normal fabric, lining and the interfacing. I'm adding a very light interfacing to it. I did the same thing for all of them. I will iron the interfacing to the normal fabric. What we are going to do next is to cut out the damp part. That's the skirt part of it. So the dress full length is 41 inches. The half length is 16 and a half inches. So we minus the half length from 41 inches. 41 minus 16.5 is 24.5. Um, that is 24 and a half inches. I'll be adding one inch for sewing allowance. So that's 25 inches. So this is the back and this is the front. So I still add 1.5 inches for zip allowance for the back side. We'll go ahead and take the measurement. I'm cutting both the front and the back together. So this is the, the waistline. From waist to hip is uh, 8.5 inches. I'll add one inch for sewing allowance. That is 9 inches. That's the full length. A quarter of our waist measurement is 8.5 inches. I will add 1.5 inches for sewing allowance. Remember 1.5 inches are sewing allowance for the upper part. So that's 10 inches. So her hip circumference measurement is 42 inches divided by 4 is 10.5. I will add 1.5 inches for sewing allowance. That's 12 inches. So I'm not adding that to the damp part. So I have 12 inches here. I will minus 1.5 inches from these 12 inches and place the remaining one here. So I will be left with 10.5 inches. I want this side to be curvy. Yeah, 10.5. So I'll go ahead and connect it from the waist to the hip. So I will take it from the hip to the bottom part. I will go ahead and cut this. So that's it for the cutting. We'll go ahead and put the fabric together. First, I will iron my interfacing on the front and the back. I've ironed the interfacing on the normal fabric. I will join them together. I will join this to this, right side facing right side. I will stitch it right from the bottom with half inch all the way to the upper part. I will stitch this side also. Do the same thing for the back side. I will use half inch to stitch it here. I will do the same thing for the lining, both the front and the back. So guys, I finished joining them together. So after joining them together, you make a notch here. Make sure you open it and then use a pressing iron to press this place open. You press it open, you do the same thing for the back side. 
So what we are going to do now is to join the lining and the normal fabric together. So we join it together, right side facing right side. And we sew the upper part here, the armhole, the neckline on this side, sew the both sides. I will turn it right from this side. So after I've done that, I will join this to the upper part. I will join it like so right side facing right side use half inch to join them together i will do the same thing for the back side i will join them on the waistline here so guys i finished joining the upper part to the down part this is the back side and uh, this is the front next is for us to add zip to the back side and then join the side together so this is the back side my zip is up to here. I will stitch up this side, place my zip like so. So I use my zip allowance to attach the zip. So after I've done that, I will join the front and the back together, right side facing right side. So I'll make sure the front and the back are lined together. So I'll place the post measurement, waist and the hip measurement. I will just turn it to the back side. I will place my post measurement here. It's folded into two now. You take place half of the post measurement, which is 20 inches. I'll mark 20 inches here. The waist is 17 inches. Mark 17 inches here. So I'll take it right from here to here. And go to the hip line. The hip is 21 inches. I'll mark it like so. So I'll take it like so. I didn't add line into the damp part. I'll stitch it all the way to the bottom, then hem the bottom part. So, guys, I'm done joining the sides together. This is the back side and this is the zip. So I left about three inches slit at the back so that she can walk uh, freely. What we are going to do now is to cut out the cape or the ruffle for the round shoulder. I will use the round shoulder to cut out the ruffles. Her round shoulder is uh, 43 inches. Since I'm making a, a pleat, I think it's pleated. It is pleated. You can gather it or you pleat it, but I think I'll be pleating it. We we'll measure the ram shoulder and times it by three. For this, her ram shoulder is uh, 43 inches times three is 129, I think so. 43 times three. Yeah, it's 129. I'll be cutting out 130. That's the wideness, but the length will be. 20 inches the wideness is 130 inches let me set this aside so this is 20 inches i'll be folding this 20 inches into two when you fold it into two you have 10 inches the fabric is a little bit firm on its own i added a very light interface in here i decided to add it here just the center just add it here, so by the time I fold it, this side will go to the damp part, while this side will go to the upper part. It will look a little bit uh, firmer than the rest part. So this is when the crinoline comes in. Crinoline or crinoline. Peg, I don't know why I find it difficult to pronounce it. So it is crinoline. Crinoline, so I'll be attaching my crinoline here. So this is the, this is the right side. I will turn it like so. Mm -hmm. So I turn it to the wrong side. So what I will do is to attach the crinoline in here. I will stitch it around the tip. See, I folded it together and place this uh, crinoline in here. I will stitch it around the tip. Well, guys, I'm done stitching the crinoline. I stitch up this side. I will turn it right from here, inside out. So 
I've turned it inside out. I will close this side. I will fold half inch inside, like so, and stitch it. We'll make it top stitch round again. Then give it a good press. After making the top stitch, I will make my pleat. I'll just take it like so. And I think the pleat is just one side. You can just play around with the pleat. You just do any pleat you want to do. I'll just pleat it this way. I will pleat it up to 44, 43 or 44 inches. I will add 1 inch to it. Remember her round shoulder is 43 inches. Yeah, I will pleat it up to 44 inches. So this is how I'm going to pleat it all through. I will pleat it round. If you like, you can make a gather here. So after pleating it, I will, I will use this to cover up the stitch. If you are making a gather, you just make a double stitch here and then pull it if you're making a pleat you just pleat it around and use this to cover up the pleats whether you're making a gather or pleat you use this to cover it up i wanted to use this it is it purple is just too much this is a bit calm i will use this this uh, design has some silver in it so i will go and uh, stitch it up and show you guys so guys i'll finish attaching the the ruffle so I ended up attaching it on both sides. If you want to have a bouncing effect, you attach it on both sides. So this is the, the lace design. I use it to cover up the stitch I made. And uh, I have to split it into two. So remember we have uh, 44 inches. So this is 22 inches and this is 22 inches. So, so what we are going to do is to attach this here. So, so long we know the measurement, we'll just start right from the midpoint here, take it to the back. Remember the armhole, we need some that we we form the, the sleeve. Is it the sleeve? Yeah. We need some here that will form the sleeve. Since I've cut it into two, I will just come here and then make it like a V. I just place it like so. I will take this other side. And uh, place it like a V also. So this lace design will form a V shape. Hope you guys can see it very well. Make it like so. And you take the side to the back side. So I will turn it to the back side. This will go to the back zip. So you just take a half inch inside and place it like so. You will shift a quarter of an inch from the zip. So I will take this other side and I place it here. I will just form this design at the back also. So I will zip it back in there. So you will attach it here just at the tip here. Maybe you can come down one inch from the tip or you just attach it around on the tip here. You just attach it around the neckline. Attach it around the tip. This is now the arm hole where the arm will go through. You see it? It is either you use a machine or needle to stitch it to it. So this is where the arms will go through for this side. So the dress is for your client, it's not for me. This is the back side. So I make this curve here like so. Unlike the front one, the front one is a V. So this is the bottom part. So guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you find this video very helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I will see you in my next one. 
love you guys bye